Yeah, it feels good filming for Black Magic Camera again. I just want to apologize in advance. Throughout this video, you're going to hear different types of audio throughout, <laughs> from lapel, shotgun mic. Uh, you're going to hear me trying to talk to the camera at 3 a.m. It's going to be a lot. So just bear with me. I was trying to just record myself in certain moments where I had the thought fresh in my mind. So at times I was very tired and other times I was just using my phone, which didn't have the greatest audio. So bear with me. Let me clear the air so I can address why I have this camera and no, this does not mean I regret <laughs> buying my Marvel. Far from it. This is just a loner. But the reason why I picked this up, and you guys should already know this by now, especially if you've been watching my channel for a while, I believe in picking the right tool for the job. Just because you have X camera, Y camera, and you're trying to pigeonhole that camera into the job when it's probably necessarily not the best tool for it, it's best to explore your options. And so obviously, I'm well aware and familiar with this pocket cameras um, and that family of cameras really do fit the solo running gun filmmaking style that this job is needing uh, so cameras from the the g2 the 6k the 6k pro and then now the 6k full frame these are the cameras i will most likely look at as my first option with a job like this. And what are we doing exactly here? Tell everybody what, what we're doing here. We are shooting at Plaza de España. Oh, you, know, you got the name. Plaza de España. And it's a government building and is absolutely- Insane. Insane. Like, Incredible. So grand. What's the word? Grandiosis? Yeah, yeah. grandiose. Grandiose. Grandiosis. It's been like this this whole trip. We are shooting for the tourism board of Andalusia. Mm -hmm. So that's all of Southern Spain. Of course, like Madrid and a ton of like really popular Spanish cities are up in the north. Mm -hmm. So we are capturing the south to show that there's a whole other south half south. of the country yeah. that is just as beautiful and just as interesting. Yep. They sent out 10 photographers from all around the world, people who hadn't been here and aren't quite familiar with it and um, they sent each of us on a different route and we get to shoot whatever we want. Insane. All right, so today's video is sponsored by Audio. You all have seen me talk about this platform for a while and it's actually the platform I've been using for most of my projects thus far. They just released a new tool called Link Match AI. What this means is that you can take a link from Spotify, Apple Music, and even SoundCloud. Remember that? If you found a song on any of those platforms, but you can't use it for your videos just because of copywriting, this is where this tool comes in handy. Take that link from those platforms, paste it into Link Match AI on the audio website, and it allows you to find a song that is similar to the song that you like. This came in perfect timing because I was listening to a lot of jazz artists and I found this perfect song for the intro of this video. However, I couldn't use it because of copywriting issues. So I took that link, put it into the tool and I found a similar song, which I actually like even better. Link Match AI is free. However, if you want to unlock all the pro features, use my discount code CINE70. The link is in my description if you want to learn more. So a job like this to be part of, it's so rare and I'm so humbled to be here. But um, to get this video going on, let's get to the gear and the user experience and all the other little tidbits I'm going to be talking about in this video. So obviously the 6K full frame, that's the cam camera of choice. I have the 
a mid 49 cage it's sort of a half cage it's super minimal but um it's sturdy the kind of folks over at mid 49 sent it over for me to use and i'll talk about more of that in this video i have a little segment about all the little things you can do with it because it's quite neat i went straight pl so i have the metabones pl adapter to l mount because i'm using my nisi athena's the 14 mil 35 mil and 85 now i'll say right now the 14 and 35 on full frame is just an whole nother level those two lenses really help me communicate what i want to go for on a visual level and i did bring with me the lower ranger 75 to 80 zoom just for those moments where you just needed a little bit more extra length and a little more versatility now the funny thing is the airport had actually misplaced my tripod coming from paris so this entire week i've just done nothing but handheld um, and I know a lot of you guys are wondering how do you get better handheld footage? Uh, there are some tricks to it and I could kind of give some pointers, but yeah, I had no tripod at all this week So I was just finding different ways to kind of prop up the camera breathing and all that stuff Yeah, I thought that was pretty funny for audio. I'm using the DJI mics the little lapel mics just in case I can just pop that on Taylor as she's walking around We haven't done much of that actually, but i um, mainly been using my shotgun mic the MK E400 from Sennheiser. Love this mic and needs a total redesign, but I really love this mic. The sound quality coming out of this mic is really, really good. So we are day three here in Spain. We are in the beautiful Sevilla and this is the first time the sun has even slightly peeked out from behind the clouds. <laughs> For batteries, I do have two Anton Power battery bases that allows me to have much longer run times throughout the day. It charges the battery internally, so if that dies, I can swap, hot swap, sort of, and then kind of keep going from there. And then for NDs, uh, since the 6K full frame doesn't have internal NDs, I have my Moment VNDs. Going into a project like this and knowing my subject, which was Taylor, she was entering this whole new experience with her camera. And I wanted my lens choice to reflect some of the emotions that she's going to uh, potentially deal with. Now, this doesn't mean you need to use the Nissi Athena's for this. Any ultra wide angle lens on a full frame sensor gives this incredible sense of grandness, sense of scale. And depending where you point that lens, it can either be uh, in isolation or some sort of inclusiveness with this odd perspective, I guess you would say. Because on the downside, if you don't work with a wide angle lens like a 14 mil, it can, it can often feel distant and flat. Whereas the 35 mil, it invites this layer of intimacy. It will give you the contextual details that an ultra wide lens can necessarily do. So, I mean, in this video, you're gonna be seeing a ton of just clips. It's gonna be hard to kind of piece together some sequences. But if you wanna see how all this kind of connects together, Taylor is actually making a very epic, long video about this experience. That's why I was there for to, to film her experience. So make sure to check out her channel, Grain Check. She will have that eventually before the end of the year. And then you can kind of see how all this pieces together uh, with sound design and all of that stuff. If you are a Star Wars junkie, this is where they filmed Padme and Anakin in the Clone Wars. This is the location. Absolutely insane. I can't believe I'm actually here. Taylor and I are like, just like, what? It is incredible. All that being said, we have the film crew. Today's going to be more of a film crew type day. We're going to be, be followed by them. They're doing a documentary. Part of this project is part of a, making a documentary, that is. So really great crew. And yeah, we're just really just taking this in. How do you feel about them so far? They're fantastic. They're setting up their shots. They know what they want, which is really nice because then they can let us break away and shoot what we want. But they have a good team. Like we're peeking over and looking at their camera and we're like, OK. Yeah, okay. they're so chill. Yeah. So chill. Yeah, they are not stressed stressed out and like rushing. It's a very good pace yeah. for a photographer, yeah. I would say.
So the top level features that matter to me about the new 6K full frame is the L mount, which allows me to be a lot more flexible with the different lenses I wanna use. In this case, I use the PL to L mount from Metabones. And then the open gate feature is again, a much welcomed addition to a camera like this. Open gate, it gives you the most flexibility in terms of how you wanna crop in different ratios. And this is a welcome change coupled with the full frame, but I'll get the full frame a little bit later. The rest of the features or the experience I'm going to be talking about, it has some pros, but also some heavy cons. And that's what we're going to be exploring moving forward. So they're filming Taylor right now for this one shot. Dang, I look like I got like no ears because of this beanie. So when it comes to the user experience of the 6K full frame, very familiar, obviously it's the same body style, which I'll rant a little bit about that later, but same body style. One of the main reasons why I got this camera for this project is that it doesn't look like your traditional cinema camera. Uh, it's not the box shape. You don't have to build it out like you've seen already. We have an Aria LF on this shoot. Um, very much a DSLR-like, and this allows me to be a little bit more discreet. Um, it doesn't scream like I have like a million dollars on me. This is great for traveling, especially when you're going through like the airports and whatnot, and TSA and whatnot. It just looks like a regular photo camera, which is helpful. And I think that helps in the disguise of this and sort of incognito look. And the other thing is just, you know, it has this large screen on the back. I don't need to put another screen up here and, you know, completely trick it out. I can just stay pretty nimble with this, you know, 1500 nit screen here, five and a half inches, whatever the size this is, and be very happy with it and kind of just make my way. So this here is the uh, mid 49 cage, kind of a half cage, very minimal for the 6K lineup. It has a lot of different sort of modularity bits here. That's not even a word, but hey, I'm gonna run with it. So you have this like sort of rod that has a um, quarter 20, three A's and a cold shoe. And there's a slot here, there's a slot here as well. So you can kind of vary the lengths as well. So you can get exactly what you need. So I've kind of used this, you know, this way at times or this way. It has this huge area here for mounting. And this is like this solid rod. And basically it kind of wraps underneath here at the bottom. You have a plate as well. And then my favorite bit is actually the NATO top rail because you can actually have two other accessories uh, for this, but you can adjust this. There's clearance for this little EVF for this thing. But uh, you can slide this off, pop the pin off, and it comes off. And now you have an even more compact. It kind of gives it a little bit more shape, a little bit more boxiness. I was a fan of the wooden camera one as well that has a little bit more surface at the top so you can actually mount things going across. But this, if you want to stay really light and nimble, this is actually a really good system in my opinion. It's more functional than pretty. And so that's one thing I really do appreciate about this cage. I just wanna make a note, all the comments I'm gonna be making afterwards now is specifically for this camera and the use case that I have it in. I can't attest to all the cameras, all the models, all the products that are out there for this 6K full frame, but this particular one, I've seen some interesting things that matter to me while I was using it on this trip. thought the Pocket 6K Pro held its own when it came to low light, and especially when using the second native ISO, even though it was a Super 35 sensor. So naturally, I thought the full frame version would be miles ahead of it. And unfortunately, that's just not the case. The second native ISO and the 6K full frame doesn't seem as clean as you would expect it to be. I mean, I really thought the combination of a fast T-stop with my Nissi Athena's at T1.9, the larger full frame sensor for more sensitivity, and the dual native ISO would be a very clean image. And in a scenario where I'm going guerrilla style running gun filmmaking and the areas that we're in indoors, it really suffered. There was a lot of digital artifacts in the footage. Now granted, I, I am in B-roll and I know there's a little bit of processing, but it took more processing to get rid of that noise pattern 
than I felt it was usually when I was with the 6K Pro, especially when I was using it last year um, in Israel for a documentary. I didn't really have that issue dealing with those files. And I technically had slower lenses. It felt like the camera needed to be black shaded. And it, there isn't really a black shade feature in this camera. I, I did some sensor calibrations for hot pixels and whatnot, but I don't know, I just found that pretty strange to see. Hello up there. Hello. How's the view? Wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Now, going back to the battery, I noticed a few things with this camera. The first one being is that I would not recommend having the original battery in the camera while you are using external battery, just because the external battery will be charging the internal battery. In, in theory, that sounds, it sounds great, but that greatly drains the main battery and then you get limited time with it. Normally a battery like this, the Anton Bauer uh, power base, I said that weird earlier, this allows you to have about four hours of runtime, but when it's charging the other battery, it significantly lessens the time. Now here's my comment about the body style of the camera. At this point, I don't care if it's a box, I don't care if it stays this style, but what absolutely needs to change are the ports on this camera. All right, so my worst nightmare has come true. The uh, port, I think it's, I don't know if it's fried or anything, it shouldn't be. I've been using this for the last four days. So I have my Anton Bauer battery and cable. Again, this is the worst external power cable I've ever used. And right now it's not reading this battery um, and the cable at all. So I'm stuck to using this little stupid <laughs> Canon batteries that this comes with. I have three of them, but that's not, that's not gonna last me the rest of the day. Um, really sucks that it's come to this. This is one of the design issues that I wish they fixed and made a better, more stable cable than this guy here. These micro ports, these, the HDMI, these need to go because as it being a professional camera, these ports aren't at the level it needs to be. Specifically for the power distribution port, which is the 12 volt port, the Limo. There needs to be a total redesign on how this camera uh, takes external power. Yes, you can also do the dummy battery into the camera, but I actually fried one of those before, not on this camera, but previous cameras. So it's just, it's the power reliability of this camera is in question moving forward. It, it's just not the greatest experience. Whatever camera comes next after this, a pro version of this, the ports need to be addressed. A better, more robust power out solution when dealing with external power. Give us an SDI option, a full SDI NAT micro, um, and things like that. So that's what I have to say about the port and the body style. I don't really care about the body style. I have mentioned that already, it is pretty helpful having this style when traveling, but the ports are what's making this camera really limiting. So one of the issues I ran into with this camera, I noticed that the mic jack was a little finicky. Now I know it has two micro XLR ports, but I didn't use that. We're using my Sennheiser MKE 40, 400. MKE 400, I think that's what it is. But I plugged it into the 6K full frame and it did not register that mic. It wouldn't deliver power, which was again, weird. So what I did is took out the battery, put it back in, turn on the camera, and it seemed to work then. And it did for the rest of the week. Right now it's been working fine. I monitor it with my headphones as I'm walking around following Taylor. So um, I can find if there's an issue. You want that peace of mind, but it's just not there fully. So I just want to point that out. All right, another update. I've noticed something else. So every time I turn on and off my camera and I'm going to be, say, monitoring it with headphones, it gets really, really quiet. And I, I can't figure out why I'm thinking it's the mic. But then I notice if I go back into the settings, go to audio, I have to readjust the dB gain for me to hear it clearly again. Just the little things that just kind of makes me want to, about this camera, just chuck it into the seat. Let me stop. But yeah, it's just weird. I don't know, little bugs I need to kind of clean up, so yeah.
Now, the fact that it is full frame is nice. Personally, I would have loved to see them put the 12K sensor or that size of a sensor, Super 35, into a pocket body, give it 8K, and have that incredible resolution for situations where you need to reframe and recrop. I think 6K is good, but for instance, the Super 16 mode in this camera, I thought I was hitting a gold mine where I can actually punch in a little bit, get a little bit uh, more reach with my lenses. But unfortunately, the quality is greatly diminished when punching that far in into a sensor. So in my mind, having higher resolution to do that, that's why this 12K was, you know, one of the reasons why it was made. To have it in a smaller form factor like this, at least 8K could probably salvage that sort of cropping in camera. So, that, you know, 6K is fine, but to get the full versatility out of it, you do need a bit more resolution where if you're stuck in a pinch and you need to get a little bit more out of your lens, this is definitely for running run and gun filmmakers or doc filmmakers and so on and so forth. That will be very useful. So when it comes to the workflow, this might shock some of you when I say this, but having just B-roll, only B-roll as the only codec in this camera is limiting to say the least. And this is for a multitude of reasons. One being that ProRes is the still the standard in a lot of editing workflows. No matter if you're in narrative, documentary, commercial, ProRes is where it's at. So I'm in a situation right now where since I only have B-roll, I have to hand off this footage for Taylor to edit and she does not have DaVinci Resolve, she doesn't know how to do anything with that. So I had to sit here and transcode all of the footage that I'm filming, about almost four terabytes of footage to ProRes for her to use. In a small situation like this, it might not be a big deal to the solo filmmaker who's just using this footage for themselves and editing, but if you're passing this along to another editor who is not in DaVinci Resolve, there's this whole extra step that you need to be aware of as well as communicate to how to kind of get through it. Now, it's not the hardest codec. I'm not saying B-Raw is bad, absolutely not. B-Raw is really great to use, but you just gotta just think about if this is a professional camera, why limit it to only B-Raw? You're making it more difficult for people. For those who don't wanna use B-Raw, you don't have an option. You only have that in the camera. I understand that the Ursa 12K does the same thing. So you're limiting to very specific users, um, those who are willing to get into this workflow, and that's about it. All right, I know I have said a lot in the last couple of minutes, and some of it might seem like I'm complaining or being dramatic, no, I am a believer in constructive criticism to the things that I enjoy and want to see succeed. But in hindsight, I will repeat that the 6K full frame was the best choice for this project. Now, all that being out the way, before I wrap up this video, I do want to say a few more words to the two people I was with this past week. To Taylor, it was an absolute joy to watch you work. You fully embrace the unknown, interacting with people, and watching you light up when an image presents itself was a thrill for me. Your talents were on full display, and now even more people around the world can enjoy your work. And to Justin, thank you for your witty jokes, your love of food, and music. Thank you for allowing us to learn from you, and more importantly, call you a friend. Tay, this is our last day. Last few like, hours. Yeah, our last couple hours. It's kind of surreal. How's it feel? I'm sad. Yeah. Because I wanted like double the time in every place. Uh-huh. We need more than one week. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Keep hitting you, my bad. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. So uh, we'll both find out the next morning. This is gonna be the sign off for the video. Appreciate you guys watching it. Let me know in the comments what you think. And I'll see you on the next one.